So Vegas, San Bernardino, what was the turning point to where you were like, I can't take no more? Did you have that one yeah. moment where it's just like, you know what, enough is enough? Yeah, so there's a there's a pivotal moment in Las Vegas where I, at first I thought I had it going because I had my own apartment. I was 18 years old, beer pong table, parties literally Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, all the you know every day was a party, and I I had all these girls. You know I had drugs. I had you know friends doing all these different things, but. At the end of the night, I'd go home and I'd be crying. And what I would be thinking about every night was, man, one day I'm about to die. I remember me and my cousin were plotting an ATM robbery because we got to a place where we had some desperate measures. I remember thinking, man, like how, how I'm going lower and lower and lower, you know. And I remember my my cousin mentioning, he said, what if, what if that person that we're about to rob at the ATM is someone like Grandma, you know? And I kind of shifted it for me too, like, man, like what am I doing? I remember when I was addicted to the cocaine there was such a violence that came out of me um, on that drug. And then I ended up losing my apartment. I ended up getting an eviction out there. And I ended up getting kicked out of places around this area um, and just wandering around on the streets. San Bernardino was like my original home. Then I went to Vegas, right? I ended up coming back to the place that I got you know, really messed up at to get help. That was what was weird was when, when I came back to San Bernardino, San Bernardino, I was like, no, I'm not going back to San Bernardino. There was nothing good there for me, right? Um, I didn't know the way World Outreach was there, but I, I remember a friend inviting me to church. I came to our Sierra Way campus. We actually had an overflow tent, and I was in the overflow tent on a Wednesday night service, and I received Jesus there. Um, from there, um, discipleship classes, anger management classes. Uh, Monday through Sunday, I was at church, you know. Um, I got baptized as well. I felt like I was getting mentored through Pastor Marco's sermons. Everything that Pastor would teach on, it would literally speak right to my life. I'd write it down and take a lot of notes, and I'd apply it right away. Three months in, I look back and I realize, oh my gosh, it's been three months. I haven't done any drugs, just been focused on God. I want to touch touch on something, and I want to make sure that everyone that's watching this understands how severe and real this is you know this isn't a made-up story this is a real story and my, my mom and dad are so happy that i go to the way and though they're not walking with god right now yet they brag about the way without reach everywhere because they know that the way without reach god through the church has helped their son and did what no one could do they couldn't even do it themselves everyone that that is watching this be inspired to really give not just give and lend a hand I'm talking about giving from your actual heart, you know? There's nothing better than seeing you give from your heart and then you see the fruit and the transformation of what happens there. Um, every single one of us as Christians, we're actually called to give. We're actually responsible as Christians to give. The community changes when we give. It's not when we wait for everyone sitting next to us in, our, in the seat to give. We're the ones that lead this and we take, take the first step. And a lot of people are scared to give and I would say if you're scared to give, start somewhere. Even if you're scared to tithe 10%, just start somewhere. Give 5%, give 8 do something. Get the ball rolling. This is your opportunity to give. Don't miss out on what God could do for you. Not only for you, but everyone that's attached to you will be blessed through your giving. And I just wanna thank you guys because the reality of it is I would not be here at all if it was not for you giving and being the church, literally. I would not be here. There would not know. There would not be a change, Gabriel. I would be another statistic. I'd be in prison doing life. That was the vision for my life that the devil had for me, and you guys helped change that. Thank you guys so much.